using elastic jobs to deploy and execute Ola Hologren's maintenance scripts against our Azure SQL DB, hold my coffee as we deploy and execute on today's Tales from the Field. If this is your first time finding us on Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us that subscribe. We here on Tales from the Field drop content on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. On Tuesdays, we have this thing we call the Roundtable, where we share links, blogs, posts that we find inspirational, put together by you, the members of the Azure community, for the Azure community. Then on Mondays and Wednesdays, we have this thing we like to call MS Tech Bits. You're watching one of those now. Let's get over to it. In a video I put together a while back, I showed how we could use Azure Data Factory to deploy and execute all of Hologram's maintenance scripts. Well, here I've come back to Elastic Jobs in Azure SQL Database. This is in preview, but there's a couple reasons why I've come back to Elastic Jobs in Azure SQL Database. One of the reasons here is under authentication, and we're gonna to touch on that here in a second. Outside of the other many changes and improvements the team has made, authentication is one of them that has brought me back. The reason I can come back to this is because now we can use authentication via a user assigned managed identity. This is huge. Many of my clients weren't allowed to use SQL logins. It was a security risk. Here, now we can create and assign a user assigned managed identity to our Elastic Job agent, allowing us to have a secure connection. The other authentication change that has been made or improved upon is that we can now use Elastic Job private endpoints to connect to our target databases. This is another huge improvement that allowed my clients to be able to utilize Elastic Jobs. Once again, still in preview, but this made huge improvements over previous deployments of this. I also want you to go through the document, create, configure, and manage Elastic Jobs. This is gonna have some great information for you. As we scroll through, you can see it's gonna show us how to create the Elastic Job, the Job Agent Authentication UMI, which is what has brought me back here, how we can run and manage our Elastic Jobs, how we can configure alerting through our Azure portal for Elastic Jobs and so on. This document here that I'm showing, which will also be included in the description of the video, is the most important document today, as this is how we are going to create and manage our Elastic Jobs by using T-SQL in the demo that we're gonna be going over. I also wanna give a huge shout out to John Martin here for the blog post on index maintenance in Azure SQL database with Ola Holgren scripts and Elastic database jobs. I'm using some of the T-SQL that he has already put together here and modifying it slightly for my demo and for my client. This will be included in the description of the video and also Ola Hologren's maintenance scripts. This dis will also be included in the description of the video in case you need to go back to it for reference. Let's get over to our environment now. Let's zoom in here a little bit. We're gonna have our SQL Server. This SQL Server is gonna contain two important databases. Our Elastic Job Agent DB, this database is going to contain all the compa components that are required for our Elastic Job Agent. And then the other database there is our Output Database. Stay tuned to the end of the video to see how I use that Output Database. And most important of this whole deployment is our Elastic Job Agent. And then we're gonna have our surrounding cast here. These are all our databases that we are going to deploy and apply Ola Hologram's maintenance scripts to. All right, on the screen here, you can see I have a SQL agent job or an Elastic Job Agent um, already deployed. However, I want us to create one together so we can get the look and feel of what a deployment's going to look like. So in the upper left-hand corner, we're gonna go ahead and hit Create. You're gonna see some information about the Elastic Job Agent on the top of the screen. We're gonna fill in then our Elastic Job Agent name then we're gonna choose the proper subscription, our resource group. 
If we didn't have one already, we would create our new logical server there with a name, and then we need to choose a database. If you had one already created, you would hit the drop down there, but we're going to create a new database from scratch. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to hit create new. When I hit create new, it's going to take us to our create new elastic job database. And look at this. It gives us a nice information that our elastic job database needs to be a minimum of S1. I'm going to type in my name there. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to configure my database. I'm going to choose standard and I'm going to type in 20 for our DTUs. 20 is going to be equivalent to an S1 and we'll see that here in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and as promised look at that we've got a standard S1 database with the default storage set up. All right we're going to go ahead and hit apply. This will take us back to our main screen. Green checkbox, green checkbox. We're good to go. That database is ready to deploy our Elastic Agent Jobs 2. I'm going to stick with a JA100, which allows us to run 100 concurrent jobs. Next, I'm going to go to Identity. This is the important part. Remember, this brought me back to looking at Elastic Jobs as part of my tool set. We can add our user assigned managed identity. I've already created one, so we're going to go ahead and select Add User Assigned Managed Identity. Up here, I'm going to select the one I've already created there on the screen. I'm going to hit Add. Once I hit Add, you're going to see it populate here on our screen. We're next going to go to Tags, fill in important tags here for your environment, and go to Review. Now, we're not going to actually create this because I've already set one up. So we're going to exit out of this. But that's how it would look and feel to deploy an Elastic Job Agent. So let's go ahead and look at the Elastic Job Agent that I've already deployed. We're going to go ahead and select it. Now we've got nothing here yet, so we don't have any job definitions, but I wanted to look real quick at identity. If you forgot or you wanted to change your user assigned managed identity, you could do it here. And you can see due to how we did our deployment, we've already got that user assigned managed identity assigned. Next thing is to deploy our security. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a login using our user assigned managed identity. And then we're going to create a user and grant that user to each of our databases with the appropriate permissions. In this case, I'm using DBO. You're going to rinse and repeat for each of your targets, a target being your SQL server that we want to apply Ola Hologren's maintenance scripts to. The next step with respect to security is we want to add security to our output database. How are we going to do that? We're going to connect to the database that is considered our output database. I'm going to create a schema maintenance there. I'm using that throughout this demo for any of our deployed objects that we're going to consider part of our maintenance. All right, then we're going to create the user within our output database, and then we're going to grant that user the appropriate permissions. In this case, I gave my user assigned managed identity DB owner. Next thing we need to do is we need to deploy or create our target group. This target group is going to contain a set of target members. We're going to execute that jobs add target group there. I'm going to call it maintenance group. And then for each target server, a target server being a SQL server that we're going to apply OLS maintenance to, we will want to execute that SP add target group member for each of the SQL servers that we want that maintenance applied to. We can run these two queries on the screen here. These queries are included in the documentation that's included in the description of the video. It showed us that we deployed our target group and the servers that are targets of that target group. All right. Once again, special shout out to John Martin. We're using some of his T-SQL scripts to deploy our maintenance solution to our elastic job. 
the first thing we're going to do is deploy the schedule. Once we deploy the schedule, this is going to run daily. Apply this how it fits best with your environment. The next step we want to do is we want to deploy our maintenance schema. This is the schema that we are going to deploy all of our maintenance objects to, in this case, Ola scripts. Now, each one of these steps needs to be repeatable. So keep that in mind when using Elastic Jobs. The next thing we are going to deploy within our environment, if we scroll down a little bit, is we are going to deploy the command log. This command log is very important. Everything we do in Ola scripts can be logged to this command log. So I definitely recommend deploying that. The next thing, we are going to create a command log high watermark table and collect the data from that high watermark. You're gonna see why I've created that and made that modification here um, for the client I deployed this for. Next step then is to deploy the command execute procedure. The brains of this whole process. Once again, thank you, Ola Hologren, for keeping this solid for many, many years now. And if we scroll down, the next thing we're going to deploy is our index optimize. This is what's going to be utilized to deploy or not deploy, but run our index optimizations and our statistics updates. First thing we're going to do is create a step. Each one of these are steps, by the way, within our index maintenance solution is to defrag our indexes. I'm sticking with the defaults here, but if you had different configurations for in, within your environment and you will have different configurations, you can put those here in the command. Refer back to Ola Hologren's documentation for those different configurations. Oh, and then finally, we're going to rebuild statistics here for a job step, and we are going to collect command log statements. This step is the really cool step. What this is going to do is go out to each of our Azure SQL DBs that we've applied our maintenance to and collect those command log statements into our output database. So essentially having them in one place. We'll see how that works here later on in the video. You could see um, how I do the output by adding those five output per type parameters to our SP add job step. So that's going to send our information to our output database that we can query later. And the final step that we are going to deploy is the client I was working with wanted to keep a minimum of seven days of the command lines in the target Azure SQL DBs. So I created a delete statement that's gonna go out there and delete anything that's greater than seven days from the command log. All right. so. What's next? Next, we need to go ahead and we need to execute this. This is going to be deployed to our SQL agent DB. So we must be connected to that. Once it's deployed, we can go over here to the portal to our Elastic Job agent, and we can see that we have deployed our index maintenance solution. Let's go ahead and click on that. First thing I wanted to show here is we could come in, we could do a refresh, cancel our job, disable our job, and we could even edit our job. If we go to edit, we could come over here. We could change our schedule if we didn't fit our needs. Let's go to job executions. If we click on our job execution ID, you could see on the screen that it's already processing and it's succeeded on some of its steps and it's in the rebuild statistics portion of the index maintenance solution. But let's go ahead and let's dig a little deeper. Let's go to job definitions. If I go over and I select on the index maintenance solution job definition, what I want to show is that we could start the job again. Let's go ahead and start the job. All right, with the job started, let's go to job executions. Once again, selecting on our job execution ID. Several steps have already succeeded there, but let's go over to SSMS. If we run this query from job executions, and this is going to be really important to know and have in your tool set when running Elastic Jobs, is this will provide us a lot of information that you won't see in the portal, especially under this last message column here. If you're getting weird bugs or errors within your deployment, 
this is the place you're going to want to look. I had some errors that I couldn't figure out until I looked at that last message. There we go. It succeeded. I want to show one cool thing. If we click on one of our steps, for example, the collect command log statements, you could see the code snippet that's running. And this is the magic why I set up that high watermark so I could pull in the most recent execution of Ola Holgren's maintenance scripts. Rather than just looking at the code snippet here, let's head over to SSMS to look at the output that is going to our output database via the job step. We're going to select top 1000 rows from central command log table here in our database. And look at that. Look, woo! Um, I'm excited about that. We have a central location that is showing us the SQL server that our database maintenance has been run against using elastic jobs and if we scroll down you can see all the information there now you may ask yourself dan i saw you do a video on this a while back on azure data factory to do the same thing would you use elastic job over azure data factory i'm going to say use what fits your skill sets what best feels right to you and works within your environment you know where we like to keep this going in the comments down below. Thank you from Tales from the Field, myself, DBA Bulldog, and my wild beard. Be good to each other. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up.